damn, how do we let this go? Hey, what's up, nerd fam? It's your boy, Gershon, and I want to welcome you to Into the Nerd, where we talk about superheroes from comics, manga, anime, whatever. Now, if you like any of that stuff, make sure you like this video and subscribe so you can get some more of that content. So today, I want to talk to you about the Luke Cage Netflix show. Now, obviously, I know it's been canceled, but there's something about it I really want to talk about. I mean, I feel like it did some really good things. But there were some things that I wish they didn't they didn't do because I feel like it did something to a character that is excellent. Luke Cage is an excellent character for a lot of reasons that people sleep on. I feel like people sleep on him because maybe he's too real. It's, it might sound funny to you because a lot of people love Black Panther. I love Black Panther, and a reason why is because obviously he's like you know he's a genius. He can fight. He has a cool suit. He's a monarch of an entire like advanced nation, and that's cool. But Luke Cage is the first African-American hero to have a titled comic within Marvel. So he's just as important as Black Panther, just coming from a different direction. And I think there are a lot of things that you can really relate to him on a regular level that people just kind of just kind of miss because not as, he's not as romanticized as a hero. And when a Netflix series failed, no one really said much of anything. They were just like, oh, okay. But I feel like more should have been said. I mean, there's a couple reasons why. So let's get into those. So Luke Cage, the show, did something that Black Panther wouldn't do for another two years, which was put tons of black people in all the principal roles, which I loved about it, whether it was the main hero, um, like the forceful villain in Cottonmouth, the political villain in, in uh, Mariah, the head detective, the um, chief of police. All of those were all held by uh, black actors, so it was tons of work, and it showed at all different spectrums of like, you know, the black experience in Harlem. I love that, that's exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to representation, it's a whole bunch of, you know, it could be, you know, a whole bunch of people who might look the same, but they don't act the same. And I love that about the show. Um, the only like big gripes that I had were about the story because they changed some things in the story that I felt really offered something to the character. Um, and that really was in his origin, right? Now in the comic, Luke Cage actually was like a gang member. He was, you know, and like, into like petty, crim he's a petty uh, criminal with, uh, Diamondback, Willis, a dude that shows up in the end of season one. Now, um, Willis's girlfriend, Reva, the one who they show um, with Luke Cage, the, you know, the one they made um, Jessica kill um, in the, spoiler, right? Um, in the Jessica Jones show, the one they made her kill, um, was actually Willis's girlfriend. And then she left him and found comfort with Luke, or Carl Luke is his real name. And he thought, well, she must have left, you know, that must have been the reason why she left him because of you. So he framed him, he ended up in jail, and that's when he you know, got put through those experiments by um, Noah Bernstein, I believe, who was trying to like replicate the super soldier serum. That never goes well, by the way. I don't know why anyone keeps trying it. Like, it never goes well. Uh, but the thing is, um, what's really important about that to me is that in the show, they said he was a police officer that got framed and like he was just like this good guy that just was down his luck. When in reality, that's just, you know, in the in the comic, he actually was a guy who wasn't a good guy when he was when he was younger. And his parents, he drove his parents crazy, broke his mother's heart. And also Diamondback is not his half brother. He actually has uh, a brother named um, James Lucas Jr. at named after his father. And that guy is so pissed off at Luke that he actually becomes a villain called Cold Fire. And he actually becomes a villain Cold Fire because he realized like in his state. You know, in his regular state, he can't beat Luke Cage, clearly the unbreakable skin, the superhuman strength. So he goes through experiments to become cold fire, which is very interesting and visually really appealing. And I know Netflix has money, so they could have done that, right? So what is the big thing? Redemption. That was missing. Redemption. Because in the in the show, he didn't actually really do anything wrong. He would just frame for no reason. Whereas in the comic, he really wasn't a good person. And the whole Heroes for Hire thing is really him becoming a better man. And why I stress this is because, um, unlike a lot of other superheroes, um, he's someone who you might actually know. Not necessarily with the super strength and everything, but a person who maybe lived their life a certain way when they were younger, but then turned their life around to go and help the community. He's also not from the South, which I think they, they made him in the show. 
he's actually, you know, he's from Harlem. A lot of the heroes are from Harlem. It's, it's also very important in the upbringing, right? Uh, but yeah, I thought that was, they, they kind of missed the, the mark with that one. I, I feel like they should have really kept close to that because it made the character so important. I mean, hell, I mean, I, I grew up with people who, you know, were some way when they were younger, but then when they grew up, grew up to be shining examples of what you can be in, in a real leader. And I thought that, that was something that's really good about Luke Cage. Um, also, I mean, through Luke Cage, and they were trying to kind of do this with Netflix, which was how he leads, you know, to his, meeting his best friend, which was Danny Rand or Iron Fist. And it's like, that show was done poorly too. And their chemistry, like you didn't really buy it, right? So that was ruined. And also by proxy, Daughters of the Dragon with Misty Knight and Colleen Wing. We also don't get that either. Two really good teams and two separate shows you possibly could have done. So I wish Netflix really would have taken it more seriously so we can actually get those things as well. Now I did like where they were going at the end of season two where they had him um, become like this kind of like uh, lord of, of crime, you know, like he was like not evil, um, but like trying to, or trying to do the necessary evil to keep everything at bay. And I wanted to see where that was gonna go. That was actually very, very interesting. And I'm, I'm sad they didn't do that. And I actually did, I really like Bushmaster because he is uh, culturally relevant. Like they show like different parts of culture. Like I love um, when they were going into like Jamaican spiritualism. Like I love that. I, I really, really love that. And then they actually went to parts of Brooklyn that obviously have clearly West Indian heritage. So it was it was accurate in that. Like there were a lot of really good things that the show did. I just wish the storytelling, like they stayed a little bit more accurate on there because I think it does the character a little bit more service, right? Also, I wish when it came to the Luke Cage character, they took it seriously enough so that it could cross over maybe into the MCU. Because I feel like all of those characters that were on Netflix could have done could have done well and maybe you know, went back and forth with the MCU because he has, you know, he's in the Mighty Avengers, actually the leader of that, because that, I believe during the Infinity storyline, he becomes the leader of the Mighty Avengers, which has Falcon in it, um, Monica Rambeau, Blue Marvel, and Ronin, or it's actually Blade, right? So, right? So now we're talking about like four prolific uh, black characters in one place. That would have been an excellent thing to either show in the MCU, or Disney Plus or whatever they were gonna do later on. Like, so I, and I think there's still hope for it. I wish, I hope they don't abandon the character. And the, I guess the sad part to me is that no one is really talking about him anymore. I, everyone is like, you know, Black Panther and I get it. I love it, what are we gonna do with that? But it's like, we have other characters. We have a whole bunch of other, other characters too. Like, let's make sure they get them in there. And the, the media, like this medium, whether it's, um, the streaming networks so on the movies, like, let's make sure they get them in there and not to get these important heroes. Because obviously, to me growing up, uh, Luke Cage was a very important character. Obviously, it's much older than me. Like, like I'll be 30 next year, so clearly, it did, and this came out, it came out like in the 70s, so clearly it's much older than I am. But it still meant something to me, to me growing up, just seeing it as, as an example. And not someone that has to be perfect from jump, but someone who could really change and make the world better. Like, whether it's small things, or like, you know, whether it's just helping taking care of the neighborhood or being part of a force that stops aliens from invading. Like that's, that's what I really like about the hero. So, um, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna say about that. Uh, let me know if you agree. If you're like, nah, man, Luke Cage was whack. I hate him. Or yeah, they should have done more things with him and there's way more room for him still within uh, the MCU or Disney Plus show. Like just don't abandon him. And everyone, please, let's keep talking about it and let's keep talking about characters just like this, all right? So keep on watching movies, keep on reading your comics, know your heroes, and remember to enter the nerd.